For more, let's go to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Hamzi Haddad is visiting fellow at uh, the European Council on Foreign Relations. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you for having me. Muqtad al Sadr supporters, one day they're on the streets, the next day they're off. A, an impressive show of force. Is this uh, uh, unprecedented or have you seen this movie before? I mean, we've seen it before with Muqtad al Sadr. You know, he always create, uh, causes an uproar and then takes a step back, backtracks on what he says. But yesterday was, you know, a very scary moment for Iraqis. Uh, Iraqis have seen this before. And they know that while Muqtad al-Sadr does backtrack, it could have easily escalated into a civil war. And why did he backtrack? It's not quite known yet whether there was a political deal brokered and, you know, they've pleased him or that he's been threatened to a level that, you know, he felt like he needed to, to step back. It's not clear yet. It, it, but pleased him, the way to please him, it seems, is by uh, calling snap elections. Yeah, because he's he won 73 seats in the October 2021 elections, which was the most out of any party, but not an outright majority. He struggled to create, uh, form a government with those 73, and he uh, foolishly forced his MPs to resign. And so he was no longer uh, at the table and needs a way to get back there. Needs a way to get back there. He can just return to uh, to Parliament. He might also be thinking that he can gain uh, more seats, uh, especially since um, his anti-Iran stances have proved popular. I don't think that's what will push Muqtada al-Sadr to more seats. I think the fact that if you have snap elections, Iraq already has a high apathy uh, to voting. There is a There's a boycott movement the last two elections. So if you have a snap election now, you'll have less people come out to vote. And so his supporters will be able to get him more seats in parliament uh, just purely out of uh, his being a cult following, not because of any rhetoric of his. And you've uh, argued in a piece in the last few days uh, uh, that snap elections would be a poor idea. It would erode, quote, what's left of the country's uh, democracy. Uh, is it... A at this point in time, you've had 10 months without a government. Doesn't that erode the country's democracy? Of course it does. I mean, Iraq historically takes months on end to form government formation. Uh, the average one takes around six months. Uh, the longest before this was nine months in 2010. So long government formations aren't new in Iraq. But the escalation into violence is something that is and is dangerous. And of course, that also erodes the trust of, of citizens. But the nature in which calling for snap elections because you don't like the way government formation is going really is, doesn't send a good message to Iraqis. What about the role of Iran at this particular point? There was this sudden uh, resignation of an influential cleric, uh, Muqtada al-Sadr, uh, who said that's the reason he was uh, uh, stepping back from politics as a result. What is Iran's plan right now? I mean, Iran's plan is always to have uh, a stable Iraq next door, one where the Shia are banded together, but not one party leads the rest. And so they're always going to be pushing for that. But let's not take away the agency from Iraqis. What we saw, the clashes yesterday, were two different Shia sides fighting one another. And I'm sure Iran has influence. I'm sure the United States also has influence. But at the end of the day, it was Iraqis that chose to take up arms against one another. Are there those in Washington tempted to side with Mokhtar al-Sadr simply because he's standing up to Tehran? I've seen uh, certain, certain analysts push for that. I'm not sure what the government stance is. It would be foolish to, to support uh, someone like Muqtad al-Sadr thinking that he is the answer to countering Iran and Iraq. But I'm sure Muqtad al-Sadr felt empowered that by pushing an anti-Iran rhetoric, he could have the West on his side. And one final question in this, of course, uh, it's right now, as you mentioned, an inter-Shia battle. But, uh, of course, Iraq also has a strong uh, Sunni component, the Kurds. Um, what about the rest of Iraqis? I mean, the arrest of Iraqis were uh, watching closely like everyone else. Uh, the Sunni and Kurdish political leaders were 
calling for calm and dialogue because they know very well that whatever happens in Baghdad in the south affects the rest of the country. And so I think they were also tensely watching what happens and maybe some of them regret pushing one side or the other to that level. Hamzi Haddad of the European Council on Foreign Relations, thank you so much for joining us from Halifax. Thank you for having me.